Hey my friends, how are you doing? It's time for the new content pack for September and this time it's super cool mock-ups that are created for you. And I know it's not September anymore, but I was sick for some days and now I'm back and I have my super cool new studio lights here and a green screen. This is not my real room, it's just a picture and I hope everybody's looking like this now. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm showing you a little video on the, the mock-ups that I've created. Afterwards, I will explain to you how they work and how I did that. Okay, see you in a second. So now we're over here in Affinity Photo. I'm going to show you how the mockups work. What is a mockup, by the way? Mockup means that you can replace part of the picture with your own product or photo in this case to show it to friends or customers or just for fun. So in this case, there's a little bit special thing about my mockups because I was mailing with unsplash.com if I can use their pictures for mockups in that way and sell them to my community. And they said, no, you cannot sell our pictures in that way. So I had to find a smart workaround for that. And the workaround is that I'm not including the pictures in my product, but I'm including a link list so you can download them yourselves. So when you open the file, your file looks like this. And I know that it's a little bit different, but don't be scared. I made it super easy for you to replace the layers and make it look like this, of course, with your own photo. So how do you do that? You double click on the blue area, best in one of the corners so you don't disturb anything in the picture that's going on. So double click on that. And this will open up an embedded file. As you can see here, now it says embedded on the top. And here you place the file that is needed for this mockup. So how do you find that file? Also very easy. This file is named 01 doc with card and comes from a folder that is called posters and frames. So you go to the PDF that, I, that I've included in the product like here, you can see file sources, posters and frames, one. So zero one is the picture one. So click on that link and there you have the picture. And now you can download the picture to your computer. After you've done that, you go back to Affinity Photo to that embedded layer and go to file and place. And then you select the file like that and just push it in the right position so it sits perfectly on the background. As you can see, it has the same ratio, the same resolution. Now, if we go back to our file, boom, it looks like that. Super cool, huh? And now we only have to replace the green part where you, your own picture gets to be put. So there's no link for that because this is where your own ideas, your own artistic concepts come into play. So let's double click on that green area. And when you look on the right, you can see it says replace with your image. And that means the layer on this position should be replaced with your own image. So for example, now I will, you can again go file and place. In my case, I will go over here to stock and select the picture from a cute cat. So let's just push this in here. So you can see it works with any kind of picture, of course. And the important thing now, I wanna point this out, is now the layer is sitting on top. So push this down here. So it sits here as the lowest layer. It's not the lowest layer because there's this kind of green layer, but this is not interfering with anything. So you can see now it looks differently because these two ambient light filters are applied to it, which gives us the right look in our mock-up picture. And additionally, I have included a pre-created reflection. So you can click this on with this little checker here, or you can click it off 
any way you want if you want to have a reflection in there or not. So when we go back to our Affinity Photo file, as you can see here now, the cat picture is in our uh, mock-up, in the right position, with the right perspective, everything is there. And now I want to talk about how did I create that, because there is some really interesting steps on how you can create the own thing. Uh, first of all, I will link a video in the video description that will tell you how to create this ambient light things and the reflection and stuff like that because I have already handled that in another video. So the important thing here is that um, there are different effects here in play to make all of this work. So I will uh, turn off the pictures again so we can see the layers more clearly. And when you look here, what I've done, especially with this picture, is that you can see I made a mask for um, the dog snout and for this I created a duplicate of our embedded layer and on top of that or below of that I painted in two different layers of shadow and two different layers of nose hair. So we have the hair on top of our card and it would be kind of hard to select single hairs and make them look great and also with the shadow because there would be color interference so painting that on is a lot easier. Then you can see another thing here and that is you can see here for example there's a lens blur on that and also here in front of it there is a lens blur of that. The reason for that of course is because the sharpness is just on the picture and the dock, but there is a little bit of unsharpness before and after or on the, on the start and the end of the card. So that's important. And the way you can do this to create um, a blur that is fading in and out on the same layer, you can create, um, in this case, actually, I, I used, um, as you can see here, a Gaussian uh, blur. And you can use um, a gradient tool that goes from the values of white to black and to white again. Or is it the other way around? You can test around with that, play around with that. Um, because of course, as an adjustment layer, you have the ability to create a mask and the mask will define where you have the blur and where the picture is not blurred at all. And this of course means when you use a Gaussian uh, sorry, a gradient that goes from white to black, you can have a smoothly fading um, blur that is getting less and less in the picture. So uh, when I turn on these layers again to see them in the picture, you can see here um, we have some very nice and convincing blur here at the start of the card and the, the uh, face of the cat is getting sharp and then it's getting a little bit blurred here also lining up with the blur that starts here with the um, uh, with the dog hair and face. As you can see here, the snout is sharp, but here down back here, uh, things are getting more blurry. Okay, so it is really fun to create that. It was really challenging, but interesting to create this work around with not including the files, but this gave me really a great insight, especially in how to prepare files um, as templates that can be used in any kind of creative ways, really cool things like packaging and all these kind of design things that you want to do. And then just fill it in with your own files, especially with, and this is maybe if you ask yourself, how did you create that um, perspective change of the file. This is done with the light, uh, sorry, live filter perspective. So you click down here, live filters, and you can select perspective, and then you can adjust your embedded file in that way. By the way, it is a little bit buggy. Don't use two of them or multiple of them, just one, because otherwise you will get super strange interferences and stuff like that. Oh, by the way, I want to show you another thing that I've created, especially for this pack that is really cool. I think it's really cool. I think you might like it too. And that is, uh, for example, if we look here, uh, look, let's look at them with the pictures, uh, pink fruit. 
there we go. So you have this picture here. And I was thinking, where can I find a nice photo of a tablet? So I have a screen device where I can use this. And it has to be, I want to replace the background in multiple ways uh, to give me more like ability to play around with that. And if you look at that, you probably think this is a photo of a real tablet computer. But it is not. This is created by me in Affinity Designer um, just with vectors. This is everything I did. And by the way, in the pro version of this um, content pack, I will include the Affinity Photo file, uh, sorry, the Affinity Designer file with the template for this tablet computer that I created. That was the tutorial for today. If you have any more questions, please put them in the comments. I really hope you like the mockups I created for you and you have a lot of fun using them. Have fun, have a nice day and see you soon. Bye.